Well, President Trump lent his endorsement to the idea of Bible literacy classes. These laws, which are being advanced in a few states, including Kentucky is one of them, a few other states, they would, um, they would introduce elective Bible classes in school. That kids, that's elective means you choose, you, go, you elect, you don't have to take it, you could take it if you wanted to. And the, the classes would teach the Bible in terms of history and literature. So obviously students are not going to be required to affirm any of the doctrines in the Bible or to affirm its infallibility, um, nor would they be taught or forced to, ad to adopt, accept any of the moral prescriptions in the Bible or any of the, uh, or, or, or will they have to accept any of the supernatural claims in the Bible? So that's, that's, in a public school setting, that's obviously not how the Bible is going to be taught. And I think we all agree that it should not be taught that way. And Christians, most of all, I think, would not want the Bible taught that way in a public school setting. And I'll get more to that a little bit later on. The Bible would be presented as a literary work, and its historical context and its impact on history would be examined. That's the idea. Now, why is this a controversial idea? Well, there's, for no good reason... The reason why it's a controversial idea is that we live in a very, very stupid culture filled with nincompoops who think that uh, where it says in the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, they think that means that schools have to ignore the very existence of religion. They think actually, they think that, that every um, public institution, every public person, anyone in the public square, everyone has to ignore the existence of religion and the public square has to exist as if religion does not exist. And, and that's what they think that, um, that phrase in the, or that clause in the First Amendment means. But that's not what it means. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. What that means is, is and there's no way for me to really explain what it means without just repeating it. But what it means is that Congress, which is a legislative body, cannot write a piece of legislation, which would then become law, which would force anyone to accept any particular religion. So that's what it means. Congress cannot make a law forcing you to accept or adopt any religion. That's, that's what the First Amendment is trying to tell us. That's got nothing at all to do with teaching the Bible in public school. Because you teach the Bible in public school, first of all, that's not Congress. Second, there's no law being passed. Third, no one is being forced to accept any religion whatsoever. So, so it, it's got nothing to do with what the First Amendment says. And the thing is, you can't really have a well-rounded education if it's divorced entirely from the Bible. It's just not possible. It, it really is impossible to have a well-rounded, a real and well-rounded education in America if you're just going to ignore the existence of the Bible. You, you can't do it. Because no matter what you believe or what God, if any, you worship, the simple fact is this, that the Bible is the most influential, important book ever composed. It is the most translated, the best-selling, the most widely read, the most quoted, the most debated, the most cherished, the most loved, the most hated, um, the most debated over. I already said that one. It is the most everything, basically, is this book. This book, more than any other book, that's ever been written or composed or compiled has molded the world in which we live, especially in the West. So if you rip it out of education, you are going to leave a Bible-shaped hole behind, which cannot really be plugged in with anything.